Today we're talking about AC balance for TIG welding aluminum. The first thing we're going to talk about is a different way that different manufacturers display the AC balance setting on the, on the touch pad or readout panel or whatever you want to call it, the front face of the machine. The Miller displays it as a simple number which indicates percentage of electrode negative, percentage of time that it's on the electrode negative side of the alternating current. And the same with the Lincoln. It displays it as the same way with just a number. Now it'd be nice if they all read the same way, but they don't. Some machines even are backwards than this, where a 70 would mean 70% 70 electrode positive. And this little machine I've been field testing here has a different way of displaying it. A setting of negative 30, which is maxed out here, means equivalent of 80 on a Miller or a Lincoln, because it's 30 the other side of 50% balanced which is indicated by the zero setting here. And if you go the other way, that means you're adding more electrode positive in there. So you're 30% the other side of 50 on here, which would be 20% electrode negative. So, you know, it can be kind of confusing. So you need to read the manual on how each one displays. And, uh, you know, the best thing is you just weld with it. If you see that electrode heating up, you know you need to go in the, uh, probably go in the other direction. Now this is a bead run with that setting of 30 on that Everlast here. That's a pretty good sweet spot for that machine and each one's a little bit different. Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're talking about AC balance because I was watching a video this morning done by Miller Electric and it was talking about AC balance and I think it, it warrants a little bit more uh, explanation. So that's what we're talking about today. All right, let's get right to it. All right, first of all, it will help us to talk about direct current electrode negative. That's where we weld stainless steel, steels, and pretty much everything but aluminum and magnesium are welded on DC EN because the current is electrode negative and it's going from here out this way, from your electrode to the positive uh, workpiece, and that's a good thing. It allows you to pinpoint heat. It allows the heat to go from the electrode into the workpiece instead of vice versa, and it allows you to, to put the heat where it needs to be and pinpoint it. That's cool. That's a good thing. But let me show you trying to weld aluminum on DCEN with straight argon and show you why we don't do that. All right, did you see that? Did you see how it looked like I was welding in a bowl of mud? That's because aluminum has a film of oxide uh, on it. All aluminum has a film of oxide, some heavier than others. A boat prop that's aluminum boat prop that's been in salt water for a while is going to have a way heavier layer of oxide than a brand new sheet of 6061 off the shelf. All aluminum's got an oxide layer on it, and, and you saw me welding that, and it was kind of like trying to weld through a plastic peel coat or something. I couldn't break through it. You could tell it was melting underneath. It was sinking and it was penetrating, but it was just like welding in a bowl of mud. So we don't do that. We can, weld, uh, we can weld aluminum on DC with, with some high helium mixtures. That's the topic for another video. Typically, it's welded on AC. All right, now let's, let's do the same thing with electrode positive and show what that does. I'm welding right on the edge here because it just only takes a few amps to do it, and I can only use a few amps with this 332nd electrode. You can see it flaring up and, and, and balling up and melting. All right, did you see that? Did you see how hot the electrode got? That was barely pressing down on the pedal. That tip of that electrode heats up because now the current is going up this way and the heat is going up this way, and it balls up that electrode really quickly. Okay, so on electrode positive, we got a really clean puddle and we got a lot of cleaning action going on. That cleaning action is a bunch of physics and stuff happening in the arc, a bunch of stuff going on with electrons dancing around and stuff. It cleans, it breaks up that oxide and lets you uh, weld and be able to see a nice, clean, wet, shiny puddle. That is a good thing. But it's impractical. It's not practical. There, you can weld some thin stuff, aluminum, uh, using DC, EP. It's just usually not practical. So that's why we weld it on AC. AC's got them both going on. It's got them chasing. So you get properties of each. You get penetration and you get cleaning action. And that's where AC balance comes in. Now you can adjust how much penetration versus how much cleaning action. So when, you, when a dial says penetration at 10 and cleaning on zero, what that's doing is towards zero, it's, it's mixing in more electrode positive, and on penetration, it's mixing in more electrode negative. It stays on the negative, hat, the negative part of the cycle a little longer. So if, a, if you, on a newer inverter machine like a Miller a Dynasty, if it reads 70 on the AC balance, that means 70% of the time it's on the electrode negative part of that cycle. 
Now, a lot of times 70% is okay. That gives you enough cleaning action and uh, you don't really want a lot more than what's necessary. You do want a nice, shiny, clean puddle. You don't want pepper in the puddle, uh, black crap going on in there. You don't want that. You, gotta, you want a nice, clean, uh, quality bead when you're done. But, um, you know, you don't want to have to use a huge electrode to do it. Let's take a quick break from the talking head and show this on a welding lathe. Set up, travel speed the same. 135 amps AC balance set right here to 50%. Balanced wave. Electrode is just quivering like crazy, about ready to fall off, and then the same amperage, AC balance increased to 70%. Tapered electrode, stable arc, electrode can handle it. So I can dial in certain characteristics on that AC balance. I can dial it in to where I get enough cleaning action, but not more than I need, and that sometimes enables you to use a smaller electrode, and it enables you to use a tapered electrode without it balling up, which is sometimes very necessary. Not always. Sometimes that ball of electrode is fine. I mean, it's, it works great, but there are some times you really need to pinpoint that arc. You're next to a bushing, you're next to a cooling fin that you don't want to arc off on at all, and with a big ball, it's going to wander around and wander around, and next thing you know, you've chewed off a corner or something you didn't want to touch. So having, having the ability to pinpoint the arc is a good thing, and that's what AC balance does. It allows you to have enough cleaning, but not more than is necessary. And that makes welding a little bit more fun. All right, let's take a look at some arcs with different AC balance settings. All these were done using the uh, Miller Dynasty just to keep everything the same. This one is 99%. AC balance set on 99. 99% electrode negative. You can see it's not a clean puddle. A lot of junk floating around there. No etching, no cleaning action going on outside the bead anywhere. And that is not what we want. No one's going to brag on you for a bead that looks like that with speckles in it like that. All right, changing the setting to 90 here, it's a little bit better. Still a lot of crud floating in the puddle. And there's a reason for that I'll tell you in a minute. It's a surprise. Much better than the 99, but still, still junky. Well, that got me to scratch in my head because I thought, you know, this ought to weld a little bit better than that. Something is up. I got some something going on in my, in my shielding gas. And so I took a look at the gas lens and I thought, huh, I think this is a Radner that I picked up somewhere. I've had trouble with these before. I swapped to a, a CK uh, gas lens and boom, no changes at all. Didn't change anything else. This is 90 again on the Miller Dynasty. See the etching zone now? So gas is a factor too. It's not just the AC balance on cleaning action. If you don't have good gas shielding, you're not going to have good cleaning action. So that's now the difference in the, uh, the previous 90 and that 90. Now we're getting somewhere. So I'll run a few more comparing. This is with the old gas lens that was giving me contamination. It wasn't shielding properly. Had the gas set on the same thing on the flow meter between 15 and 20 CFH. You see it's better than before. This is set, this is 80. This is with the AC balance set on 80. It's getting better. The material is not all that clean, but it still should do better than that. And so this is now same setting, 80 with the better gas lens here. Much wider uh, cleaning zone, much cleaner, shinier puddle. So it's surprising with a good gas lens of how well you can do it with a setting as high as 80. So I'll only use the good one going forward here. This is 70. This is still the Miller Dynasty set uh, 70 and that's got really a lot of cleaning action because it's got good argon shielding. And one more at 60. It's, it's, a, rare, it's a rare occasion that I have to go below 60 for, uh, for any, any type work that I do. That's got a nice wide cleaning zone. The puddle's nice and shiny and fluid. No pepper in the puddle. It's good. All right, so now hopefully we understand AC balance a little bit better, but now the question, where do I set my AC balance and how do I know where to set it on what application? Well, it's going to be different every time. Like I said before, a, uh, a boat prop that's heavily oxidized and got corrosion on it is going to require more cleaning action than a brand new piece of 6061 tubing or sheet. Uh, handrails, things that have been exposed to the elements are going to have a thicker layer of oxidation on them than new materials. So, 
here's the bottom line. I always start off with about 65 if I've got an inverter and go from there. A lot of times I never move it off 65. I like it there. I'd rather have a clean puddle. That little etching zone does not worry me most of the time. So 65 to 70 is a real good sweet spot and uh, you go from there. If you, if you have an application where you really need to pinpoint the arc and you know you've got good clean argon and you know you can get good shielding gas, you can go up a little higher than you can if you've got any, any, if you got any contamination in your shielding gas or anything that's disturbing your flow, like if you're welding over, over an edge where it's splitting the flow of argon, uh, you're going to need a little bit more cleaning action because ox oxides don't just happen on the surface, they happen as you weld. Sometimes they're introduced into the puddle and if you don't have enough cleaning action going on with enough electrode positive uh, uh, cycles going on, uh, you know, you can have problems. You can have a lot of black stuff and oxides floating around in the puddle and a bad looking weld. So that's it. Well, hey, I appreciate you watching and I'd appreciate it if you'd go visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.